What is happening? People, look, check it out. 6-6. Six, six. We are getting closer to the end of chapter 6. Uh, here we go. Systems of inequalities, your least favorite thing to do. How do I know that? Because we're doing inequalities right now. You guys are grumpy. So anyway, uh, same thing's going to happen, guys. So we're going to have a two-variable a inequality. And we're going to have two of them. And we're going to graph it. Good news, we started out with Desmos, we're ending with Desmos, okay? So today will be a big day on Desmos, use it. Uh, we're still going to talk about a lot of the, the same things um, that we have been, right? This shouldn't look new. We're still going to have our, you know, half plane. We're still going to have a dashed line or a solid line based on the inequality we see, you know, and then we're going to have that shaded region, right? That, that shaded region, the half plane is our solution area. Only difference is today we're going to have two of them. Right, so we're looking for like the overlapping shaded region. That'll make more sense uh, once we get into it here. All right, um, so first and foremost, here we go. So if you guys wanna just pay attention, if you wanna sketch down these graphs, uh, that's fine too. Here's what we got. Um, we've got two, two variable inequalities, right? Here they are both in slope intercept form. And we just have to graph them, right? And it says solve the system of inequalities by graphing. All right, that's literally all we've got to do, okay? Make this go away. So guys, I've, I've carefully done that on these first two. So y greater than 2x plus 2, y greater than or equal to negative x minus 3, all right? And here's what it looks like. Can we, there we go, drag this around a little bit. Okay, so here's our, here's our two half planes, right? Like here's the red half plane, here's the blue half plane. You know, thinking about what each one of them means, right? Every ordered pair here in the red is a solution uh, for the red uh, inequality, y greater than 2x plus 2, okay? All the shaded blue area, right? All of those ordered pairs are solutions to y greater than or equal to negative x minus 3. But where, oh, where do you ask are these solutions for the system? Well, once again, folks, these are going to be I'd like to zoom out a little bit. Can I zoom out a smidge? There we go. Okay. So all of these ordered pairs, right, in, in this darker shaded, kind of looks, it kind of looks purple, right? This purple region right here, those are your solutions, right? How many of them are there? Just like we've been having. There's an infinite number of solutions uh, when we're talking about inequalities. Things to know, guys, check out your boundary lines. Solid line. So that means we are including right, any ordered pair on, on this boundary line. What about this boundary line if it's dashed? <laughs> Doesn't happen, right? This boundary line, if the ordered pair, like if they said, hey, is, is this ordered pair right here, 4, 10, is that um, a solution to this? We would say no, right, because 4, 10 is on the boundary line and it's a dotted or dashed boundary line. Right, which means we are not going to include those points. Okay? If they just didn't give you a graph but gave you an ordered pair and said, hey, is it a solution? Again, all we have to do is substitute those x and y values in here and make sure both statements are true. Or you know, if one of them is false, then it's not going to be. Okay, anyway, so there you go. Um, so solve the system by graphing. Guys, that's what it looks like. Beautiful. This one says solve the system of inequalities by graphing. It gives me some choices. Okay, so luckily for you, I've graphed those over here. Turn those two graphs off. Turn these two graphs on. All right, here's what we got here. It's kind of cool when I do that. Yeah, anyway. Okay, so once again, boundary line here, boundary line here. My overlapping shaded region, right, is this, I don't even know what color it is, this darker color. We got green and purple. I'm not really good with numbers and what they turn into. But anyway, it's this region right here. So let's see if we can't figure out which one of these looks like that. Uh, do, 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 do. I'm going to say this one here, right? That region, that region. The green region here, that's your, uh, that is your solution set. Okay? So we would choose letter D. Again, solve this one by graphing, okay? Maybe you notice it right now, maybe you don't. That's okay, right? We're going to put it in Desmos and see what happens, all right? 
So this one goes away. There's your first one. There's your second one. Those look pretty sweet, doesn't it? All right. Uh, let me just get back to my standard home view. Maybe, maybe not. Did I just lose my mouse? Did I? Who's to say? Anyway, uh, if we were to zoom in there, look, I'll zoom in. Yeah, I can type. There you go. All right, so guys, easier to see, right, uh, on this one. Two parallel lines, right? They're both going in opposite, right? Like the solution areas are going in like opposite directions. Um, so is there a solution here? Is there uh, some ordered pairs that will be true statements in both of these? No, right? So this is what no solution will look like, okay? That was great. Um, so yes, no solution. We, we are allowed to have that. Apparently we're back to working. Okay. Uh, solve this system. Y greater than 4x, Y less than 4x minus 3. Bam, it looks like that. I don't know why they put equals on here. These are not equations. Okay, uh, so anyway, um, there we go. What do you guys think of this? Did I really graph this one on here too? Probably because, you know, I love me some Desmos time. There's that one. There's that one. Yeah. So once again, guys, another example. No solution here as well. Okay. Look, we're just cruising right through this one. Um, okay. Then we get to this one. So we got to do a little bit of writing first, and then we're going to do a little bit of graphing. Okay. And this one is a bad example of something to graph or really write. Like graphing is fine. Um, anyway, let's take a look here. College service requires that its members maintain at least a 3.0 grade point average. That ain't that tough. That's a B average. Okay. Come on, folks. Uh, and volunteer at least 10 hours a week. Okay. Define the variables and write a system of inequalities to represent this scenario. Okay. So your two variables, right? I'm just going to say X um, is, we have, we have X and Y. It doesn't really matter what we make them. Um, I'm going to say X is the volunteer volunteer hours, and y is the grade point average, okay? And really, we're just writing one inequality for each one of these things, because it doesn't give me more information than just these two things. It says, hey, your members have to maintain at least a 3.0 grade point average. So members must maintain at least a 3.0 grade point average. Right? Like, like literally, that's it. Think about what that would look like on a graph. Maybe you know, maybe you don't know. That's okay. Second part of this says volunteers uh, work at least 10 hours a week, or volunteer at least 10 hours a week. Okay? So there's your system. I know it doesn't look like the systems that we've seen, um, but look, we've got two variables, x and y. Uh, I've got two equations here. Okay? I understand both variables aren't in each equation. Actually, they are. We could say that I could say, like, you know, y plus 0x, mm -hmm. and then that would make that go away. Anyway, I digress. Let's check out what this looks like um, on a graph. Uh, go away, go away. So here's y greater than 3. Okay, makes sense. Goes through the y axis at the number 3. Where do you think x greater than 10 is going to go, guys? There it is. Oh, no, I didn't see it. There we go. Okay? So think about what this represents. Again, the purple shaded area, these are all of your grade point averages greater than, what is this, three? Here's all the number of hours we could volunteer that are greater than uh, 10 hours. Right? Where are your solutions? Well, they're just up here. Right? All of these amounts of grade point average and volunteer hours will be above the, hey, you've got to have at least a 3.0 and you've got to volunteer at least 10 hours, right? So any of these combinations of grade point averages and hours worked um, will work as a solution, right? But, you know, not this one down here. Like, hey, you can't have a 2.0 and volunteer 12 hours, right? This is where my fingers are. You can't really see it. But right, that point right there doesn't work. It doesn't meet both of them. That's what, we're, what I'm trying to get you guys to understand. Right? It meets 
both. All of these ordered pairs meet both criteria here. Huh? All right. Here we go. A couple more, then we're out of here. Okay, this isn't so bad. Maybe it is. I have, who's to say? The senior class is sponsoring a blood drive. Good for them. Uh, anyone who wishes to get blood must be at least 17 years old. So at least 17. Weigh at least 110 pounds. Craft these requirements. Okay. So it looks like they've made Y the weight. So that's at least 110 pounds. X is the age. So at least uh, 17. This is going to look very similar to the question that we just did. We're going to have one that's a vertical, one that's a horizontal line. Okay. So let's look at here. So weight, 110, yes, right? We want all of those weights. Age, 17, great, yes, we want all of those. And then, you know what, hey, I think we picked the right one right off the bat. Yeah, again, this shaded area will meet the requirements, the age and weight requirements, right, that you need to give blood, right? If we look here, why doesn't this one work? Well, here they they went um, younger, than 17. That, that's just bad. That doesn't work. Okay. Uh, same thing that they did here. They went less than 17. No, that doesn't work. Uh, what did they do here? Yeah, they, they just didn't do anything right there. Anyway, uh, we could keep going on and on and on about this. Uh, I digress into our last slide here. This has been very enjoyable for you, I'm sure. Probably the shortest uh, video notes we've ever had all year. Uh, which one of these ordered pairs, gang, matches up over here? Is it 16 and 115? Nope. 17, 105? Uh -uh. Nope. 17, 125? Mm-hmm. Yep, that's the winning one right there. 18, 108? No. Nope. Okay. So, yeah, we would choose letter C here. Uh, again, if you weren't sure, you would graph this. You'd put them in Desmos. You can actually plot ordered pairs in Desmos, and it'll show you where it is. Pretty exciting, I know. Um, anyway, so guys, hey, that's it. Solving systems of inequalities. Again, not that terrible. Um, nor is it, because we're using Desmos. The Desmos is a lot of fun. So hopefully that was uh, great, and you like these inequalities a little bit better than Chapter 5's inequalities. Absolute value ones. A lot of fun. Multi-step. Compound. It's good stuff. Anyway, have a great day, and if you have questions, let me know. See you.